In section 4.2, we're going to talk about the slope of a line. The learning target is to find and interpret the slope of a line. The success criteria is I can explain the meaning of slope, I can find the slope of a line, and I can interpret the slope of a line in a real life problem. So I'm going to scroll down here for the key idea of slope. The slope m of a line is the value of the ratio of the change in y, which is the rise, to the change in x, which is the run, between two points. We can just call them x1, comma, y1, and x2, comma, y2, on the line. The slope of a line is a measure of the steepness of the line. Right here, we have a bunch of different ways to say the same thing. Okay, so we call m slope, and that's the exact same thing as the rise over run, rise divided by run, which is the exact same thing as the change in y over the change in x. And if you think about the word change, change actually means subtraction. Um, so that means that we're just going to subtract the y components from our two points and then divide that by the difference of the x components, subtracting the x components here. So in my point, I have x2 and, and y2 right here, and then I have x1 and y1 right here. All I'm doing is the y component, so y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is the exact same thing as my y change over my x change, which we call rise over run. And you might also see the Greek letter delta um, used. That mean, literally means change in. So I'll write that over here. Scroll down a bit. Delta y over delta x is the exact same thing as change in y over change in x, which is the exact same thing as m, our slope. So you'll see this delta y over delta x, change in y over change in x, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and rise over run. They all mean the same thing. They're all slope. And down here it says lines with positive slopes rise from left to right, and lines with negative slopes fall from left to right. And we're going to talk about that later. Describe the slope of each line, then find each slope. All right, so I'm going to zoom in here. So well, the first thing I notice is that my, uh, my y value is increasing as my x value is increasing. So my y value is going up as I go from left to right. So that means I have a positive slope here. So this is a positive slope. Now I need to find the slope. For part A, I'm going to find it by just using my rise over run on the graph. And then part B, I'll do it a different way. So I'm going to start with this point on the bottom, negative 3, comma, negative 1. And I'm just going to count how many spaces it takes. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it just took me five spaces to get to the same level as the other point. So that means that my change in y, and I'm going to use that delta right here, change in y, delta y over delta x. Well, that's going to be equal to 5 because up 5 in math is positive 5. Now I'm going to go from here to this point. So I'm going to count the number of spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's 6 spaces to the right. Remember, in math, 6 is positive. Okay, So that's going to be 5 over 6. So my slope of this line is 5 sixths. Now, you could have done it from this point to this point instead of the bottom point to the top point. Um, we would get negative 5 over negative 6, but that does simplify to 5, 6. So if you want to try that one out on your own, you totally can. Anyway, for part B, I'm going to describe the slope first. So I see that as I move from left to right, my line is decreasing. The y value of this line is decreasing. So that means I have a negative slope. So the slope is negative for part B. And then uh, to find the slope, I'm going to pretend like I don't have the line with me. So I'm not going to do the rise over run because I just did that. I'm going to do a different method. I'm going to use the equation that was given to us, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that's equal to my slope. Remember, this is just the y value of one of your points minus the y value of your other point, and then divided by the x value from this y value minus the x value from this y value. Okay, and that will give us our slope. Okay, so it doesn't matter which point you call point one and point two. I'm going to call this one point number two. I'll call this one point number one. So that means that my y2 is the y component of point number two. That's going to be one, this one right here. So that's going to be one minus 
And then, well, y1 is just the y component of this point. That's negative 2. So 1 minus negative 2. Now, normally, we would put parentheses around this negative 2. But whenever we're doing a minus a negative, I like to keep it like this. And you'll see why in a moment. Now, I'm going to have my big fraction bar here. And I want to go back to my second point here, point number 2. And I'm going to put my x component of that point. So that's negative 1. And then minus positive 1. Okay? Uh, a common mistake would be to forget one of these negative signs. Okay? If it's 1 minus a negative, um, you need to include both negatives. And I know that this negative and this negative are going to cancel out and turn to a positive. So the way that I do that is I just put a big plus sign. Okay? That makes it easier for me. Anyway, I have 1 plus 2, which is 3, over negative 1 minus 1. Well, that's going to become negative 2. Okay, and then I'm just going to make this fraction look nicer um, and have the negative on the side rather than the bottom. We never want the negative on the bottom. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative 3 halves, and that is our slope. You could write it as negative 1.5 or negative 1 and 1 half, but it's actually advantageous to use... Uh, improper fractions when we're dealing with slopes. And now we're done with this one. Find the slope of each line. All right, so then the first one, I'm going to do my rise over run, and the second one, I'll do the uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Once again, they're the same thing mathematically, and they will both work. Anyway, rise over run here, well, I'll start with this point. There is no rise. I'm not going up at all or down at all. So that means that my rise is zero. Okay, so rise, which is the same thing, as my change in y is going to be 0. And then my run, which is my change in x, or delta x, well, let's count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, so I'm going from negative 1 to 6, and that's 7 spaces. So my run is 7. Well, this is 0 divided by 7. And 0 divided by 7 is just going to be 0. I always like to say, remember, Always think of Mr. G's friends dividing them into seven groups in this case, and I still have zero friends. I'm obviously just joking, but uh, that's how my students remember that. Anyway, so that's easy. The slope of this line is zero. And notice, this is a horizontal line, okay? So the slope of every single horizontal line is going to be zero. For part B, I'll do it the other way, like I said. I'll do my change in Y, delta Y over delta X, which is the same thing as Y2 minus Y1 over x2 minus x1. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Um, I'm going to call my top point number 2, and then my bottom point number 1. And then I'm just going to plug in my values to this formula. Okay. Well, my y component of point number 2 is 6. 6 minus, and then this is 2 here, my y component of point number 1, over 4 minus 4. And this is going to simplify to 4 over 0. Well, now we have a problem, okay? Because I'm not allowed to divide by 0, okay? If you think of it, if you try to um, conceptualize what dividing by 0 means, you'll figure out it doesn't make sense. If you have $4 and put them into 0 groups, how much money is in each group? Well, that doesn't make sense. There are no groups, so how could there be money in a group? Okay, there's all sorts of different ways to convince yourself that this makes zero sense. Anyway, in math, we call this an undefined value. This value is not defined, therefore our slope is also undefined. We do not have a defined number to describe the slope. So this is an example of an undefined slope. And notice, this is a vertical line. All vertical lines if you do rise over run, you'll end up in a situation where you need to divide by zero, and you'll always have an undefined slope. So anytime you see a vertical line, you know the slope is undefined. So here is a uh, graphic of all the different kinds of slopes of lines that you can have. For positive slope, we see that the line is increasing from left to right. For negative slope, we see the line is decreasing from left to right. Slope of zero is a horizontal line, okay? And then the undefined slope is the vertical line. Okay, now we're going to talk about parallel lines. Lines in the same plane that do not intersect are parallel lines. Non-vertical parallel lines have the same slope. All vertical lines are parallel. All right, so if you can calculate the slope and they're the same, then you have parallel lines. And if you see 
two vertical lines, you also know that they are parallel, assuming that they are different lines and not the same line. In this example, we need to figure out which lines are parallel. So I see three lines, and they all look pretty similar in terms of slope. But remember, parallel lines have the same slope. So in order to figure out whether or not they're parallel, I need to find the slopes of all three. Okay, So I'll start with the blue one, and I'll use a blue pen to count my rise over run here. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four up. So my change in, I'm going to zoom in, or scroll down, I should say. So my change in y, or my rise, is positive four. And then my change in x, for the blue one, I just have to move one over. So that's going to be over one, and that's one to the right, I should have said. So that's positive four over positive one. So my slope of the blue line is four. Now I'm going to do the red line. So once again, I'll start at the bottom. I'll go up one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to go right one. So my change in y is equal to five, positive five, because I went up. And then my change in x is equal to positive one, because I went right one. Okay. Well, five over one is equal to five. So since the red slope and the blue slope are different, I know that the red line and the blue line are not parallel. Okay. Now I'm going to calculate the green line slope. So once again, I'll start at the bottom, and I'll do my rise over run. One, two, three, four. So my rise is four. Change in y equals four. And then over change in x. And all I have to do is move one over to the right. So I move one right. And that's positive 1. So this is 4. So I noticed that my green line and my blue line have the same slope. So I know that the green line and the blue line are parallel. Green and blue are parallel. And now we're done with this one. The table shows the distance y in miles of a space probe from a comet x minutes after it begins its approach. The points in the table lie on a line. Find and interpret the slope of the line. Well, I'm going to, once again, use my change in y over change in x. Okay, So you can use the formula here, or on a table, sometimes it's easier to just see what's happening Okay, between two points. You can use more than two points, but uh, two points is all you need. And when I say two points, I mean two xy pairs. So I'm just going to do the first two. I'm going to do this xy pair and this xy pair. So I see... I'm going to start with my y. I see that I'm going from 8 to 6. So to get from 8 to 6, I'm going to subtract 2. So to get from here to here, I'm going to do minus 2. So that right here is my change in y. Okay. So my change in y is equal to negative 2. Well, while I am changing by negative 2 in y, let's see what I'm doing in x. My change in x, well, I'm going from 1 to 4. So the way I'm getting from 1 to 4 is by adding 3. Okay, So if I add 3 from 1, I get 4. I kind of wrote over it. Sorry about that. Anyway, so my change in y over my change in x is negative 2 over positive 3. So I know my slope is going to be negative 2 thirds. So that's the slope here. Now, if you're not sure that that's the right answer, you can keep trying that. And notice, if I get 6 to 4, that's still a minus 2. And then 4 to 7, that's still a plus 3, so that's going to work. And then same thing here, 4 to 2, that's minus 2. And then 7 to 10, that's plus 3. So it's consistent, and that makes sense because the line has a constant slope the entire time. Anyway, the last part of this is to interpret uh, our slope. And what interpret means is to explain your answer using the context of the problem. Okay, So I know that y is the distance in miles of the space probe from the comet, and x is the number of minutes that it begins to approach. So the negative 2 over 3 means that the distance is reducing by 2 miles every 3 minutes. So I'm going to rewrite that here. So this means negative 2 miles per, per means divided by, 3 minutes. Now if you were to write that out in words, you could say the distance from the comet to the space probe is reducing by two miles every three minutes. And now we're done with this one.